In this video, we'll be looking at sketching cubic functions. A cubic function has the general form of this, so y equals ax cubed plus bx squared plus cx plus d, where a, b, c, and d are some constants. So the simplest cubic equation there is, is just y equals x cubed, and this is a bit of a special case. So let's quickly sketch what this looks like. Now, if y, uh, if x is really uh, negative, really big and negative, so very far on uh, the left side of the scale, then y is also going to be negative, because when you multiply negative by itself three times, you also get a negative, and it's going to be even bigger. So we're going to be starting off from around here, and if x is positive and really big, then y is also going to be positive and even bigger. So we know uh, already that the corners are going to be opposite each other in opposite quadrants, and then we also know that uh, at x equals 0, y is equal to 0. So we know it goes through the origin and it goes uh, into these corners. So in general, um, y equals x cubed looks something like this. It curves in like that and then it curves out back like that. So it's got a bit of curvature to it and it starts uh, bottom left and goes top right. So this is a bit of a special case in the sense that there aren't any turning points. Usually if you have a more complicated cubic equation, then you'll have um, some turning points. So we're going to look at some examples. But firstly, we can divide the cases into two cases. So uh, if we draw out the plane here, and so firstly, if we have an equation of this form and a is positive, so we have a plus x cubed term, then the graph is going to look something like this, in the sense that uh, we're going to have the corners opposite quadrants and the bottom left. Um, so when x is really negative, then y is also going to be negative. And when x is positive, y is also going to be positive. So this is what happens when a is positive. And obviously, you're going to get some behavior in the middle. We don't really know what it is yet. But it might look something like this, for example, where it curves about and it ends up in the corners. And then for the second case, if a is negative, then we get something similar. Let's draw out the plane x and y. So if a is negative, then we have like a negative x cubed term. So if x is really negative, then we're going to be multiplying a negative by a negative, and we're actually going to cancel that out and get a positive. So y is going to be positive in this case. And similarly, if x is positive, then y is going to be um, negative for very big x. So it's the corners, we know they're going to tend to these corners. And just like before, we're going to get some behavior in the middle. We don't really know what it is. It might look like this. And then it ends in the corners. So in general, a cubic equation has two turning points. So it has two places where it goes uh, down and then back up and up and then down. And similarly for here, we have two turning points in this diagram. So now we're going to look at some specific examples and look what their graphs look like. Okay, so to start off with, we're going to do y equals x minus 2 times x minus 1 times x plus 1. Now, this is a cubic equation because if you expand everything out, the highest term is going to be an x cubed, but it's already in a factored form. So this uh, is going to be really useful in knowing some information about how to sketch it. So to start off with, if we want to know the x-intercepts, we just set this equation equal to 0. So we have these three brackets equal to zero, and then we find that the roots are exactly when each bracket is equal to zero in turn. So from this, we find that, that the roots, the places where y is equal to zero, are x equals to two from this bracket, um, x is equal to one from the middle bracket, and x is equal to minus one from the last bracket. And we also can work out the y-intercept just from looking at this equation. So the y-intercept which is the point on the y-axis where x is equal to zero. So all we do is we substitute x is equal to zero into this equation, and we essentially get all the constant terms multiplied by each other. So y equals minus two times minus one times one, and this just equals two. So this is the y-intercept. And now we've got all the information we need to sketch it. So let's draw a big step diagram uh, axes over here, the x-axis and the y-axis. So from looking at the roots, we know that it's going to cross at minus 1, it's going to cross at 1, and it's also going to cross at 2. And we also know it's going to cross on the, the y-axis at 2 as well. 
So if we were to expand everything out, we would get a one times an x cubed term. So the coefficient of the x cubed term would be positive, which means that the tails of this function tend at uh, the left hand corner and the top right corner. So if we were to go to x to negative infinity, y would also go to negative infinity. And if x was to go to positive infinity, y, uh, y would also go to positive infinity. So now it's just a matter of joining the dots really. Uh, we have to draw a continuous line that goes through all these points. And we're gonna do it like this. So it goes through minus one, then it touches up at two. This is another turning point. And then it crosses back down at one and it crosses back through two, and then it goes off to plus infinity. So this is what this cubic function looks like. We've got two turning points and three places where it crosses the x-axis. So we're gonna look at a few more examples now, just get some intuition behind what these graphs look like. Just make some space. So obviously this is in a factorized form and this really helps us in determining what the graph looks like. If it wasn't in a factorized form, then it would be a lot harder and we might actually have to plug some numbers in to get a sense of what the shape of the curve is. So just like before, we first want to work out the roots, the uh, x-axis intercepts. So we set y is equal to zero, and then we get the roots are just the numbers that make each bracket individually equal to zero. So the roots are x is equal to three from the first bracket, x is equal to one from the second bracket, and x is equal to minus one from the last bracket. And again, we can also work out that y intercept just by substituting x is equal to zero in this equation. So if we do that, we're just gonna get the constants all multiplied by each other. So we'll get y is equal to minus three times one, uh, times one here, and then times one again. So this just equals y equals minus three. And now we can sketch the curve. So let's draw some axes, x axis and y axis. And now we have to observe that we have a negative x in our factorization. So if you were to expand everything out, we would get a negative x cubed term. So already we know that the corners are gonna be, uh, when x is really uh, negative and large, y is, also, uh, y is gonna be positive this time because the negative is gonna cancel out. And then when x is really big, y is gonna be negative. So we know kind of the tail of the graph already just by from the x cubed term. And then we need to draw on the uh, roots. So we know the curve's gonna cross at minus one, it's gonna cross at one, and it's gonna cross at three. And then we also know the y-intercept, which is negative, so it's gonna come down here, somewhere around there, and cross at negative three. So now we know that the curve needs to start up here, it needs to go through these roots, uh, being a nice continuous curve, and it has to end up down in the right bottom right-hand corner. So the way we do this, if I just wrap this out here, we're gonna go down through minus one, through the y-intercept, then back up through the second root, and then turn around the second time and go through the last root. And this is what our curve roughly looks like. So we know that it crosses the x-axis at three points as well, crosses the y-axis here, and then we know the tails of the curve as well. Okay, so now I'm gonna do a harder example. We're gonna do y equals x minus two squared times x plus one. Now this is still a cubic, but we have x minus two appearing twice. So this is gonna change the shape slightly. We're gonna use the same method. We're gonna first find out the roots by setting y is equal to zero. So we'll get the roots out as x. We have to set this bracket equal to zero, and that's gonna give us two and then this bracket equals zero, which is gonna give us one. So now we've only got two roots. So the curve is only gonna cross the x-axis twice. And just as before, we can uh, find the y-intercept. So the y-intercept is found by setting x is equal to zero. So we just get the constants multiplied by each other. So we get minus two squared. It's important to remember the squared term. And then just one. So y is equal to four. This is the y-intercept. So now let's go ahead and sketch the curve, x-axis and the y-axis up here. We know that we've got a positive x cubed uh, coefficient, it's just one. So we know already that the, the tails of the uh, curve are gonna be the bottom left-hand corner and the top right-hand corner. Then we know that the curve crosses the x-axis twice at minus one, 
and also at 2. And we know that the y-intercept is 4, so somewhere around here. So we've got to start in the bottom left-hand corner. We've got to go through this route, this y-intercept, and this route as well, and then end up back in the top right-hand corner. Now, this might seem impossible because if we go back down through this route, then we can't go back up without crossing the x-axis again. But what we're going to do is we're going to come up here, cross the, this route here, through the y-intercept, and then we're just going to come down and just very slightly touch the x-axis once, so just kiss it. We are only touching at one point and then we're going straight back up again into the top right hand corner. So now we've got a cubic function, we've got the characteristic shape, it's like an S shape, um, very squished, um, and then we've only got the curve crossing at exactly two points and this is because we've got this kind of uh, bouncing off the x-axis at this root. Now this root is called a repeated root and it's simply because we've got this squared uh, term here in the function. So this kind of gives us the always positive bit around this uh, root. Okay, I want to do one final example, and this is just gonna be y is equal to x plus two cubed. So we're slowly reducing the number of factors. Now we've only got x plus two being involved, but raised to a power. And as you can see, this is gonna be a cubic again, because if you expand it out, you are gonna get an x cubed term. So let's go ahead and find out the roots. We do this by setting y equal to zero. And then the root, well, the root in this case is only one. It's only gonna be when this bracket is equal to zero, which is x is equal to minus two. This is the only point where this graph is gonna cross the x-axis. And we can also work out the y-intercept. So we do this by setting x is equal to zero in the equation, and we're just gonna get two cubed. So two cubed, that is just eight. So this is the y-intercept. So now we need to sketch this curve. Let's draw out the axes, x and y. But this time we've only got one root, one place that the graph crosses the x-axis. And we also know it goes through the y-axis uh, at eight. So the way we do this is we actually have to think back to what the graph of y equals x cubed looked like. If you remember, it was just like a very shallow S-shape and there wasn't any turning points, it just, went down like this and up like this. And in fact, this uh, uh, curve is just that function shifted to the left by two. This is what adding two in the brackets is doing essentially. So we're gonna get a function that looks a bit like this. It's gonna go up like this and then just kind of uh, inflexed on minus two then go back up, cross the y-axis here and then go off to infinity. So this is just the y equals x cubed function shifted to the left by two. So this is kind of a, another special case where we don't get the turning points that we usually see in a cubic function. And that pretty much summarizes all the types of cubic functions that you'll see. So you'll either get three roots, two roots, or one root. You'll definitely get at least one root because it's got to start at uh, opposite ends and then cross the x-axis. So that kind of summarizes all the kind of different shapes that you'll see.